topic of this section is cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy constitutes a group of diseases that directly affect the structural and functional ability of the myocardium. You can have primary cardi cardiomyopathy, which is of an unknown etiology, or secondary cardiomyopathy, which is caused by another disease process. Dilated cardiomyopathy is the most common type of cardiomyopathy, with a prevalence of 5 to 8 cases per 100,000 people in the United States. Dilated cardiomyopathy is characterized by diffused inflammation and rapid degeneration of myocardial fibers that results in ventricular dilation, impairment of systolic function, atrial enlargement, and stasis of blood in the left ventricle. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is asymmetric left ventricular hypertrophy without ventricular dilation. With dilated cardiomyopathy, the patient will represent with fatigue, weakness, palpitations, dyspnea, oftentimes they have symptoms of heart failure. They will have moderate cardiomegaly, decreased cardiac contractility, and they may have atrial and ventricular dysrhythmias. Their cardiac output is decreased. Oftentimes it will be diagnosed by chest x-ray, ECG, a BNP lab, and a cardiac catheterization. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the patient will have exertional dyspnea, fatigue, angina, syncope, and palpitations. They will have mild to moderate cardiomegaly. They may have increased or decreased contractility. They will also have atrial or ventricle dysrhythmias. And their cardiac output may be normal or decreased. An ECG, an echocardiogram, and a cardiac catheterization will help identify a diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Our first course of treatment will be to treat the underlying cause. Otherwise, medications are listed here that will be used for both dilated or hypertrophic, except where noted. So nitrates will be used only in, dila in dilated cardiomyopathy. Beta blockers, Antidysrhythmics, ACE inhibitors, and diuretics will be used for both. Digoxin will be used in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy, and anticoagulants will be used if indicated for patients possibly with valvular disease or patients with atrial fib or atrial flutter. Unfortunately, dilated cardiomyopathy does not respond well to drug therapies. Patients who do not benefit from drug therapies may be considered for a ventricular assist device or a VAD. The VAD can be used in patients who are terminal or end stage, or it can be a bridge until the patient is able to receive a cardiac transplant. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Patients may need to have cardiac resynchronization if they are experiencing atrial dysrhythmias. They may also have an implanted cardiodiverter or defibrillator if they have high risk for sudden cardiac death. There can also be surgical correction that may occur, and this involves an incision of the hypertrophied septal muscle and resection of some of the hypertrophied ventricle muscle. Most patients have an improvement in symptoms and exercise tolerance after surgery. Patient teaching will be similar to other patients with cardiovascular diseases, but we need to make sure they understand their medications. They follow a low fat, low cholesterol, low sodium diet. They should have six to eight glasses of water a day, unless it's contraindicated from another medical diagnosis they might have. They want to maintain a reasonable weight and avoid large meals. They should avoid alcohol, caffeine, and over the counter medications. They want to balance rest time with activity, reduce stress. They should know the signs and symptoms of, a, of heart failure or of a heart failure exacerbation. And it's suggested that a caregiver learn CPR. For patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you want to focus your teaching on helping patients avoid strenuous activities and dehydration. 
any activity that can cause an increase in systemic vascular resistance is dangerous and should be avoided. Rest and elevation of the feet to improve venous return to the heart can help manage chest pain in these patients. Vasodilators such as nitroglycerin may worsen the chest pain by decreasing venous return and further increasing obstruction of blood flow from the heart.